Today I will show you a portable amateur radio station that I've been working on for the past two weeks. I took this rig up to 2,900 feet on Mount Diablo and made nearly 30 contacts. I received my license in November of 2019, and I started out with a Baofeng radio like many ham radio operators do. And uh, it was pretty fun. I made some contacts, I experimented with some better antennas, I tried the bigger battery, uh, I tried a different MFJ antenna, which is a, uh, I believe, 5 8 wavelength on uh, 2 meter, 144 megahertz, and made some contacts, had a lot of fun, had a, like, learned a lot about the hobby, but I kind of wanted more from the whole experience. You know, I wanted to try and reach people further away and kind of wanted a better radio. I wanted to start experimenting with APRS without having to lug around like a Raspberry Pi or a laptop or whatever. And uh, so I started looking into other options. I decided to build a portable rig so that I could operate at any location. I took this rig up Mount Diablo and made contacts with friendly amateur radio operators all around the San Francisco Bay Area. I wanted this setup to have a few features. The first is that it should be battery powered. To achieve that, I installed two 12 volt, 16 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. These batteries are installed in parallel to add their capacities for a total of 32 amp hours. This means that if the rig consumes one amp standby current, it would have a runtime of 32 hours, roughly speaking. That is plenty. The batteries are charged in two different ways. The first is through a simple RC car charger. The second is through solar via a 10 amp MPPT controller. This controller ensures that we maximize the amount of energy that we can pull from the solar panel. The rig will also have front and rear lights, but that is still a work in progress. The first piece of radio hardware that I installed in this rig is a two meter amplifier. This would allow me to use handheld radios with this simple shack in a box. I plan to install an RF switch to allow switching the amplifier input to a PL259 connector on the front or an internal source. More on that to come soon. This is a B310G amplifier that can operate in both SSB and FM modes. It has proven to be incredibly powerful. The built-in preamp is also a handy addition. Along the way, I decided it was time for a better handheld. After reading about some of the spurious emissions issues of the Baofeng radios, I became worried that transmitting amplified spurious emissions would be a bad idea. I wanted a radio that could send APRS packets and had a built-in GPS as well. There are basically two radios that implement these features. There's the Yesu FT3DR and the Kenwood THD74. They're both great radios, but after some reading I became convinced that the THD74 was built for more advanced users. I wanted the KISS TNC, the SD card recording, GPS. Both radios are very similar, but ultimately I decided that the THD74 was for me, and I am incredibly happy with it. When operating mobile, I mount an MFJ1412 antenna to a suction cup mount on the trunk of my car. My car is constructed from aluminum, so the usual mag mount antennas do not work. This brings us to operating mobile on Mount Diablo. I found a westward facing parking lot at 2900 feet altitude. This gives plenty of line of sight to the entire San Francisco Bay Area. I operated with the rig in the trunk and a small coax cable to the front of the car. A friend of mine, Alex, helped to arrange the first contact from more than 30 miles away. He tuned in to 146.520 FM simplex and we were able to establish a connection. He took this cool photo from where he received my signal. I was able to make some really fun contacts with other amateur radio operators from around the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, 7 3 you. enjoy the rest of your evening. For anybody else who's out there, I am KN6SBU and uh, monitoring from Mount Diablo at about 2,900 feet. KM6FBU, KM6 NMX. KM6FU, I think I heard Kilo Mike 6 November Mike X ray. Uh, if that's correct, feel free to occur, uh, you know, get back to me. KM6FU. Yeah, that's affirmative. Uh, hello, Andrew. Uh, my name is George down here. I'm in uh, South Bay in uh, Campbell um, down here. Foxtrot Victor Uniform. The name here is Andrew. Good evening. This is Kilo Mike 6. Mike Romeo Uniform, uh, Chris here in Benicia, copy. KM6MRU, Chris, yeah, copy, loud and clear, you got a really strong signal, 5-9, no problem. Uh, you said Benicia, that's great. Um, how are you doing this evening, KM6FEU? I'm doing really good, it's not too hot, so it's nice tonight, and uh, sounds like you are making... Sunnyvale, could you repeat your call sign? Yeah, copy, Whiskey 6, Delta Tango, Whiskey, name is David, I'm mobile in Sunnyville. David, it's uh, name here is Andrew, and I am currently mobile on Mount Diablo at 2,900 feet. So we got uh, probably really good line of sight and uh, 
Good signal permissions. You sound real good up here. Uh, how are you doing today? The name here is Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, good signal down here. So this went on and on for about two hours. I contacted more than 25 amateur radio operators. They were all super friendly. I didn't have any negative experiences and met some really interesting people. We talked about antennas, talked about radios, just kind of nerded out on the air. And it was a really good time. I am excited to start collecting QSL cards, so I decided to QSL as many of these contacts as I could, if the operator was friendly and if we had a pleasant exchange. This was a 100% success rate, except for a couple of contacts that just dropped off the air. I'm waiting for more stamps so that I can finish the rest of these. The amateur radio community is really great. So that's my video, uh, and that's my work in progress project as well. Uh, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like, and if you want to hear more from me, feel free to subscribe. I'll have a follow-up video for this one coming soon with some information about how this rig ends up coming together. I have an FT991, which is a multi-band all-mode radio on the way. I won from eBay. I'm going to plan to install that, and I have some kind of RF stuff planned with RF switches and whatnot to make things kind of flexible and usable in the field. So yeah, be on the lookout for that, and if you want to you know, be sure to get that, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you for now, and uh, with that, I will see you next time.